welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up in today's show, how you can ring in the new year and help preserve Louisiana's historic treasures at the same time. Plus, after cancer discovered throughout his body and given only two weeks to live, see how Joey Landry is now cancer free. Then, see how two South Louisiana women are giving hope to millions with the disfiguring type of rosacea. The incredible transformation coming up. And Dr. Nick on the difference between confidence and arrogance. But first, if you don't yet have plans on how you're going to ring in the new year, right behind me is a first ever event worth checking out. Louisiana's historic treasure, the old governor's mansion, will open its doors for a first ever New Year's Eve party. <laughs> Happy New Year! Foundation for Historical Louisiana Executive Director, Fairley Jackson, says she's been wanting to make this happen. This was something that we've been talking about for a couple of years now, and after, after talking to Karen and Bill Profita, and they were willing to be our host couple for the event, we said, we're gonna give this a shot and let everybody come to the mansion, the most elegant venue downtown for the most elegant evening, New Year's Eve. The first New Year's Eve celebrated here was 88 years ago. Governor Huey P. Long had the previous mansion raised and built this one to resemble another house he aspired to live in. A lot of us know that he had aspirations to go to the White House, so he wanted to have a mansion that resembled the White House for when he got there. Some even say down to where the light switches are placed. So we have this beautiful mansion with the West, West Wing, which we like to say we have our offices in the West Wing, <laughs> just like the White House, and um, our beautiful ballroom, which is where most of the festivities will be happening. This year's celebration will be as splendid as any in its history. Lots of wonderful food by Wayne Stabler, the mastermind oh. behind Stabs and many other great restaurants here in Baton Rouge. Uh, the wonderful tunes of your friend Nick Abraham and his band. Uh, lots of wonderful food, open bar, champagne, breakfast to follow, wow. and step outside and check out the fireworks as well. Yes, fireworks. Guests will have a stunning view of the big fireworks show lighting up downtown Baton Rouge. It's walking right outside the door, standing in the driveway, and catching the fireworks display. So, you know, we never know what the weather's going to do. So, here at the mansion, step outside, check out the fireworks, step back inside, and enjoy the food and some libations and great tunes. Ticket sales to this year's New Year's Eve party also help preserve Louisiana's history throughout the state. We work around the state for architectural and cultural preservation. So we do a lot of work to tell the stories of all of our fellow citizens and the rich history that we have, as well as advocate for our historic tax credit, which helps to revitalize our communities and rebuild all of our wonderful historic structures. Tomorrow night, you can make your own memories at the mansion and become part of its celebrated history. For ticket information, go to preserve-louisiana.org. And now to a story worthy of a fireworks display all its own. Meet the man who was covered with cancer throughout his body. And despite his two weeks to live prognosis, is now cancer free.
Well, hello. Hey, how you doing? Fantastic. How have you been? Three years ago, oncologist Dr. Ryan Chows gave Joseph Landry two weeks to live. Cancer filled his body. Cancer was also in his colon and bone marrow. First scan, and this is a PET scan. And so you can see all the black is actually the lymphoma. Wow. And so as you... Top to bottom, you can see here, here, um, bones, the spleen, and then the abdomen. At my first visit, when I was diagnosed with lymphoma cancer, it was stage four. And if I didn't uh, go through the chemotherapy, uh, six months treatment, I would have about two to three weeks. To live? Yeah. Oh, that's and terrifying. he talked me into it, Dr. Shaw, because I was afraid of the chemo. We actually gave him a very aggressive regimen, a, a five-day infusional regimen that uh, requires you to be in the hospital to get, so it's, it's pretty intense. And so the, the outcomes with that regimen for what he had are actually very good. The latest PET scan proves it. You can see the black is gone. Wow. And if we look at this, all the bright spots have disappeared. And the, all the stuff we saw in the abdomen is gone and the bones are gone. At last week's visit, he got wonderful news. Three years cancer free and very less likely for it to return. It would be rare. Dr. Shao says outcomes like Joseph's are on the rise thanks to new treatments. It's exploded. Really? I mean, there's so many new treatments. I mean, every, seems like every week there's something new. You know, you have patients that have been, say, getting treatment after treatment and you think there's nothing left to, to offer them and then all of a sudden something will come out. And so we have, you know, the ability to take a, a, a cancer and do the entire genetic expression of it and find mutations where we have uh, immunotherapy and targeted therapy where we have you know pills that people can take so it's very exciting actually oh, that's yeah. great. every year something new Mary Bird Cancer Center is now able to treat nearly every patient they no longer have to go to places like MD Anderson we have clinical trials for all major types of cancer and we have uh, very advanced radiation techniques and so it's a not only is it a beautiful facility but they're very good as far as taking care of everybody and so nobody is excluded um, and yeah I think it's a you know our infusion center is one of the largest in the in the south actually and yeah, state-of-the-art so I think it's a it's a wonderful place and uh, it's great for the community for Joseph and thousands more, they'll ring in the new year that years ago would not have been possible. Up next, another amazing medical story. See how 20 years of disfigurement was healed, not with surgery, but with an exterior laser. Then Dr. Nick, shows us how to tell the difference between confidence and arrogance as Weekends with Whitney continues. Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy. Atlas Foundation Repair. Fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees.
Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. Now, changing the face of medicine, literally. Only knows what I'd be Looking at Pamela today, it's hard to imagine for the last 20 years, she looked like this. Her nose grew so large, she barely looked like the little girl, then woman she used to be. Her nose first changed when she was 25, pregnant with her second child. It's like a ball started to form on the top. You know, people would tell me, uh, little children, you look like Santa Claus or Rudolph. She hoped it was just hormones and her nose would return to normal after pregnancy. But it got worse. She went to a dermatologist for help. He put me on medicine, you know, and he'd take a needle and pull out infection. Oh, it hurt so much. The treatment didn't work. I was self-conscious and I didn't want to go anywhere, you know. I didn't want to leave the house and um, I'd catch myself looking in the mirror more than I needed to, worrying, you know, sure. and having anxiety, sweating under my arms. Even at home, she couldn't escape the ridicule. Her husband was as cruel as strangers. I didn't feel beautiful because of his words and the way he treated me. She went to another dermatologist who tried a variety of treatments. Still, nothing worked. I just lost hope in, you know, what these doctors had done all these years. I just felt like a guinea pig and they really didn't cure me mm -hmm. or uh, explain what is going on. Her nose was etched with red veins, her pores expanded, and its shape grew worse. The nose started to grow on one side. And then there was holes that started to form where you could stick a tweezer in my, those holes. Physical and emotional scars took root. Hope was lost. Then last fall at a family picnic, her aunt had an idea. Aunt said, hey, why don't you get online and do this thing, you know? Maybe they'll help you. I was like, really? Oh, okay. The thing online was an email to the TV show, The Doctors. Had you ever seen The Doctors show? No! Oh, I didn't even know it existed. <laughs> it would be an answered prayer. It was a prayer I'd had about four years prior. Could I ever find a doctor that could help me? It was also four years ago, she prayed for the strength to leave her husband. I didn't want to stay in that anymore, that abuse. I woke up and it's like, I'm worth more than this. Wow. He didn't value me. If he didn't, then I must not. With that same fortitude, she emailed the show's producers. She heard back almost immediately. And I was like, wow, that was quick. Can I see some more pictures? Okay, we want to know your testimony. I was like, okay, I kind of got a little excited, a little nervous, because I'd only flown one time. We want to ship you out. She flew off to L.A. Well, the amazing thing was uh, going through a divorce after 32 years with him. I was speaking to my father and I said, Father, can I have an anniversary trip even though I know I'm not with him? On my anniversary, we just so happened to be in California for the doctor's show. Yes, that was a blessing. Something else took flight there too. It gave me hope, you know, that they could do something. Now, I didn't know what was going to happen. Or I mean, who was going to be yes, doing it, Yes, I had no right? idea if they are going to, you know, cut on me. Then, there she was on national TV. There's got to be a cure for this. It's just got to be. When I went out there and they started showing pictures of my old pictures, that really touched me. You know, to see those old pictures and through the stages of my face changing, I was yeah. emotional. Another doctor would change everything. I want to bring into the conversation board certified dermatologist, Dr. Ann Zedlitz. She's joining us via Skype from Pamela's hometown in Louisiana. What kind of options are available for Pamela? In the early stages, topical medications and some oral medications will suffice. As the disease progresses, then we can utilize laser therapy, such as CO2 laser. Dr. Zedlitz, I know you have something you want to share with Pamela. Yeah, well, it's an honor to be here on the show, but it would be even more of an honor to participate in Pamela's care, to get her nose back to the original shape it was and to make her skin smoother again. And I would like to do all of these treatments at no charge. The doctors reached out to Dr. Z after seeing pictures of men she'd treated with the same condition. 
It's called rhinophyma, a form of rosacea. It's most prevalent in men over 60. Were you surprised for a woman in her 40s for her nose to look like that? It's very unusual. Number one, it's unusual for a woman, and then it's unusual for someone young in their 40s. So it's very unusual. I have seen women in their 40s and 30s when they start to get that blush and that redness on the tip of the nose, mm -hmm. but not where they've had the tissue overgrowth. And it's genetic. You can't wash that away. Mm. You can't wish it away. You can. You have to have some kind of surgical intervention. And laser surgery is what this is. It's laser surgery. It's not traditional surgery with a scalpel, right. but it's laser surgery. Most doctors thought only a scalpel could slenderize her nose. Dr. Z knew the CO2 laser would. A lot of people just don't know what is out there and what you can do with lasers. And I happened to go through my dermatology training and I loved lasers because I could see the future in lasers. <laughs> and it is a bright future. So mm. scalpels may become a thing of the past. When you saw Pamela for the first time, yes, were you a little shocked? No, because I had seen the pictures. Okay, when you no, saw the pictures, you were know you what shocked? I was shocked with? Tell me. Her presence. She had such a strong presence. Mm. And her spirit because generally people who've been through that, who, who have, an, um, have a physical deformity, mm -hmm. it sometimes stunts or blocks their emotional growth and their um, presence, and it did not with her. Mm. And it was amazing, that, that strength that she had, her faith got her through this. And her faith is what will continue to carry her through because although she has a strong presence in her faith, she still has some scars some psychological scars mm -hmm. that she will carry with her, but she's shedding them very fast. So I love to see she's continuing to even become more beautiful. The procedures were painless. It was so peaceful, no pain. No, I just felt like I had a light sunburn. The results, immediate. Could you tell a difference after the first day? Yes, I could, I could, could, yes. We took some pictures and I looked at those pictures of me and I can see in my face, you know, there was a light in my eye that hadn't been there in a long time and hope. Everyone's eyes lit up in her second appearance on The Doctors, just four months after her first. I barely recognize you because you look so great. Thank you. She and Dr. Z stunned everyone. We have rarely seen a more dramatic before and after reveal. Well, how does that feel? I'm very proud. I'm very proud. I'm very um, honored to be a part of the transformation. Show everyone around the nation what can be done. You know? Baton Rouge proud. Their story's gone viral. A million people have watched it on YouTube in just two weeks. It's still hard to believe. I still walk around, it's still hard to believe when I look in the mirror. But Dr. Z won't take all the credit. Every time before I touched Pamela's face, I said a prayer uh, to guide me, and he did. It was great. It really is true in your beginning yeah. for me. God only knows what I'd be without you. For more information on rhinophyma and other skin conditions, check out zdermatology.com. And now to Dr. Nick. If someone has turned you off because they seemed arrogant, it may not have been that at all. Do you run across people who you think are arrogant? And what exactly do we mean when we say arrogant? And what is arrogance? Dr. Nick joins us with more. <laughs> it's a loaded question. Well, you know, I, I, saying I, I sweat before this because people have called me that. And I just, it, I just am so sensitive. I can just feel myself right now. And I don't think it's you are at all. It's something, but I've been trying to study more and more of it. And, it really is, arrogance really is a sense of almost entitlement or greater worth or better than or, or looking I have down the at people. answer. Yeah, I, th I think that it has more to do with, with a kind of coming across with the answer 
or this mm -hmm. is what you should do, or this is how you should handle it. And I instead see. of uh, helping people look at options mm. of what might be best for you. Right, well, what, in the or, therapy world, it, you know, people, if, if their definition of arrogant is coming across and your ideas are better than theirs. <laughs> you step into that every hour of every day. <laughs> See, if they ask me what I think, I mean, there are times when I'm going to say it's not my place to think. It's my place to help you think, which which is really one of the one of the struggles. Um, but but the but the but the other side of it too, though, Whitney, is I think I, I think that it, 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 an allegation of of arrogance can also be mistaken it can be someone's confidence or someone feeling competent and and that and that's not necessarily arrogant or someone feeling like I went to a workshop or I went somewhere and I just didn't really get a whole lot out of it I'm not saying it was bad I just didn't feed me does that make that person that's not fed arrogant or does that make that person need to say I have to find other places where you're right I get what I need. Yes, yes, yes. I think, and I'm going there, to tell you this it too. It doesn't have to be a content. I'm sorry to interrupt. Oh no, no, no go it ahead. It doesn't have to be a ladder up. It can be a horizontal. Like no, I'm just not there. I, I'm, I'm somebody can be here, and and so we need we need to be around. You know, I always say you want to play tennis with someone who's better. <laughs> right. That doesn't make the not other way person, better. That doesn't make the other person <laughs> arrogant. Right. Oh, go, go they just I want to improve their you. skills, and you're right. Yeah, okay. You're right. No, I was just going to say, um, I have seen situations where arrogance is mistaken for shyness. Hmm. I've known people who were dreadfully shy, let's say at a party, and maybe the next day somebody else at the party was, and they were like, well, so-and-so didn't say a thing to me. Oh. Wow, so arrogant. And I have to or say- dismissive, which is all a part of it. Who does she think she is? Yes, and oh. I have to say what you don't realize is she is incredibly shy. Like if you had gone up and spoken to her, she would have she opened up and you all could have had a delightful conversation, but she cannot walk across the room and start a conversation with someone she doesn't know. It's just not in her DNA. She just can't do it. And so I, I, I hate it for those people who get mislabeled as arrogant when really they're just painfully shy. That's really interesting. And, and, I, and I'm thinking if we cross that bridge to the other side, someone could see someone with a lot of confidence and strong opinions and a strong personality as arrogant. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's, you know, you could be doomed either way. <laughs> I know. And so we re what we really need to do is, is not judge other people for their behavior, period, right? Yes. And, and I also think that, that we could all, and it may not be the opposite of arrogance, but I certainly think it helps diminish it, and that is humility. Mm. Right. I, and, and that's why I... I I can't think of how many times a week I will say, I don't have the final word. Well, I, look, I can't. I love that line. I do too. I do too. Look. I can't tell you how many times a week. My favorite thing to laugh about is myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of laughs about me because. Very good, Whitney. I'm so That's imperfect. Humility. That's humility. That's humility. That's humility. But I would also hope that, that you or anyone out there that's listening really take some time today on a Sunday to reflect on the difference between arrogance and confidence and competence and in one's in one's personality right right in one's personality but uh, but also be be humble enough to ask people am I coming across like I'm better than I you? I think that is so helpful because I certainly don't want to come across as better than you we differ uh, I have another perspective but can we can we be can we be uh, civil in our in our discussion Right, right. And again, it, the shy person may not have much to say, and so it's like, okay, go, go think about it, and we'll come back and talk about it next week when you've processed it. <laughs> right, but, but, you know, if there's a shy person out there, if you're that shy person, and you have heard that people have accused you of being arrogant, maybe at the next gathering, walk over and start a conversation mm. with someone that you don't know. Mm. I know it's, it's frightening, but wow, you just might meet a best friend. That's, that's when it, I get, uh, like that interchange I was telling you about. I was so thinking that this person was gonna absolutely love this person. I was like, how did you like her? Did you get a chance to talk? And, and I was like, no, I'm very arrogant, standoffish. And mm. I was like, 
How hard did you try? How hard did you try? I was going to say that. And that, the other that side person of didn't it. try. The person that's, that saw the shyness could have also walked over and, and tried to make some connection or say hello. Or, but remember, a shy person with a very high strung personality might clash. <laughs> I know. At, at first. At first. But then could become the best of friends. Yeah. Yeah. I still it's, have hope for those two. It's. It, it's <laughs> 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 okay, something to, certainly something to think about on, on this Sunday day of rest. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Nick. Good to be with you. More Weekends with Whitney after this. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. Discover your art of living at Dixon Smith Interiors. With 10,000 square feet of inspired interiors, it's easy to bring beauty home. Create a unique interior that reflects your exterior. Translate what you love into where you live. For 60 years, Dixon Smith has refined the art of style, space, and comfort. You're a work of art. Your home should be too. Embrace your art of living at Dixon Smith Interiors in the heart of Baton Rouge. Discover Dixon. Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy. Thanks for sharing your time with us here on Weekends with Whitney. Wishing you the happiest of New Year's. But until then, we leave you with this.